Okay, on November 21st and November 22nd, uh, 2015, there was a large harp operation, ionospheric heater operation, out in the Pacific to prevent this rain system from reaching Southern California. Let me zoom in and I can show you a harp downburst right at the end of this sequence here. This uh, circle is what I believe is a harp downburst, and that's uh, these. Uh, um, classified Navy Island here. Uh, San Nicolas has a terrestrial harp transmitter and especially Isla Guadalupe west of Baja has a harp transmitter. And they, uh, the evening of November 21st, did a massive all night long harp attack on this low pressure system. Let me go back in time and show you how it, how it started. Okay, November 20th, uh, there was a little bit of low pressure or thunderstorms building up here uh, midday. And then if we look at the evening picture, the evening of 20, uh, the 20th, November 20th, we see a little bit of low pressure building here. These are thunderstorms, and these form the, the uh, low pressure that's going to be a problem for the HARP uh, weather controllers. Okay, the next morning on the 21st, we see the same thunderstorm complex is still in position. Now here's where it gets very interesting. The evening of November 21st, this small uh, thunderstorm complex still looks perfectly ordinary, perfectly ordinary, nothing strange about it. Step through and watch the sun set. But right before the sun sets, we see an oval shape here, very faint, but you can't actually make out an oval. And the long axis of this ellipse is actually pointing back to uh, San Nicolas Island, the Navy, uh, the Navy Island, classified Navy facility. So the morning of the 22nd, we look at this same thunderstorm complex, and now it looks completely different. This is it after an entire night uh, being uh, downbursted by these harp transmitters. And it has taken on a pine cone uh, appearance. Uh, here we see this southern edge is basically a buildup of these harp downburst roll clouds because they are moving southwest at the same speed as the jet stream is trying to move them northeast. So this is pretty unusual to see. This is an overnight record of multiple harp downbursts. And if we jump ahead, uh, play. Okay, so this is now uh, daybreak to mid-morning. And one thing that we notice is there's a, a clear circle here that appears right here. So this is another harp downburst in the daytime. And they did that because the earlier harp downburst had created a, a um, um, area of instability, a line where thunderstorms are going to build up. So they're pressing dry air down right here uh, to kill this line of thunderstorms. So this is definitely to prevent rain from going into Southern California. And just let this run a little bit. You can see this circular shape, especially in the morning. And uh, you can see these, there's something trying to move to the Southwest. These, uh, in other words, these dark roll clouds, uh, or light as the case may be, if they boost up a uh, humid air layer and then form condensation on top. Meanwhile, this uh, jet stream at uh, uh, 18,000 feet, it's going about 30 miles an hour to the northeast. So uh, they are actually about the same speed, and that's why we see these things build up like fish scales. And as the day goes on, we see uh, this area here becomes highly pixelated compared to the clouds that are, are not being messed with. And uh, 
as common like uh, you can see here's a, a fairly straight line so that's a boundary between the, the photoshopped area and the natural clouds so just to show, show what I think is photoshopping because it was a Sunday afternoon and apparently somebody was pretty bored they uh, did, did a little writing in the clouds apparently uh, just have a look and see what you think but uh, if we look at this area right here and step through, okay, here's a harp downburst. We have some some uh, thunderstorms suddenly building, and they immediately hit it. And there's a duplicate frame there, always suspicious there. And now, very strange look to it. And there, kind of like a little either a cross or a T clouds there. And not only that, this is, I'm not magnified very far, and yet here's a B slash 111. So maybe someone with the initials TB the third uh, is just having some fun on a um, Sunday afternoon when the supervisor's not around. Here's a cross, two little eyeballs, a head, two little arms, two little legs. It looks like sort of a cartoon uh, extraterrestrial or something, but uh, step ahead and see how it looks. Okay, that's the end of that sequence. Double frame. And then the T. Okay. So after 24 hours of ionospheric heater, man-made high pressure in the jet stream, this is what we wind up with. A bunch of photoshopping in the clouds. And they only let me have two frames as the sun was going down. Back up. See everything else is it says image not found. Very, very slow to download this goes west visible for me. Sometimes take twenty minutes and then they won't let me have it at all. But uh so the storm has been destroyed and blank and then it's dark, so I only get two frames there. And uh here's something that's I find amazing is that between the Isla Guada Guadalupe harp transmitter and the target zone uh, there's this persistent triangle of dry air. Dark means dry and uh, white means uh, a lot of water vapor in the middle to upper atmosphere. So this dark triangle persisted here all day long until this storm system was destroyed and they shut off the harp transmitter in the evening. So we'll jump ahead. Okay, November 22nd, 19 Zulu, and everything is moving, except for that triangle. Two hours later, the storm system is getting uh, more and more blown apart, but that triangle is still hanging in there. So obviously they are transmitting some kind of high power through this area, uh, or there is something here that the Photoshop people do not want to see us to see and it's easiest to just put a black triangle there. So this is sunset and we see the triangle finally starting to move. The storm is now falling apart, disintegrated and as the sun is setting we see this triangle finally start moving. And here's well after sunset see the triangle blowing off to the east if it ever existed at all and the fish scales have finally turned uh, right angles and now they are blowing east so this storm system that should have gone into Southern California is now going to enter Baja California is probably just a bunch of clouds uh, I want to go ahead and show the overview again because if we look to the south Baja we see what looks like a powerful hurricane uh, but speed it up a little the problem is <coughs> here in visible light is the only place where this thing appears it does not appear in any of the other uh, water vapor maps or pressure maps or wind maps so why are they photoshopping this giant 
simp pseudo hurricane on here and I think it's probably to uh, cover up to provide a distraction for this major screw up here uh, maybe it's not a screw up they they just didn't think anybody would would notice it I suppose but uh, if we go back just real quickly to look at the uh, surface wind and the wind aloft uh, you can see why there's just not a good explanation for these fish scale appearance I mean if they appear here they should be appearing everywhere okay the uh, surface winds are real I mean sorry this is the jet stream the jet stream here is <coughs> the uh, it, it appears to only be about 30 knots because the uh, pinecone uh, storm is right about in this area here, so that's about the uh, third or fourth shade of, of blue. So call it maybe 35 knots. Surface wind is almost uh, calm, 1,000 millibar, 950 millibar, a couple thousand feet. It's still practically calm, 900 millibar. There's a little bit of north south wind, rather. Inner 50 bill. 850 millibar is 5,000 feet. Still, very little wind movement at all. 5,500 millibar is uh, 18,000 feet. And now we do see some of the jet stream starting to show up here. And it looks to be 15, 20, mil 20 knots. And again, we just saw the, the jet stream. So there's nothing here to account for the... Uh, pine cone fish scale clouds and the sea surface temperature uh, is going to be right about here so that's right between the blue and the orange so let's call it maybe 68 degrees 67 68 degrees so that's that's warm enough to uh, trigger some good heavy uh, thunderstorms which would then uh, head on into San Diego or LA Okay, so what's the takeaway message here? And it's uh, really simple, that to create, uh, to drive plasma down from the ionosphere into the jet stream, they have to uh, create a giant hole in the ozone layer because the, the, the D layer of the ionosphere is at 30 miles high and the ozone layer is at 18 miles high. So after a full 24 hours of popping multiple holes in the ionosphere here, when the sun comes up the next day, there is zero uh, ultraviolet B protection for the ocean. And the plankton in this area, the phytoplankton, the base of the food chain, will, will die because they cannot cope with ultraviolet B. So <coughs> that is the, the summary here to take away is that that while the people in these programs believe they are doing something maybe saving the earth or making money for some big <coughs> Wall Street bank what they're really doing is killing the oceans and the oceans create 80 percent of our oxygen uh, <coughs> The uh, land, forest, crops, grass, all of that is not a net oxygen creator. The only oxygen is actually created by the phytoplankton in, in the ocean. So as we kill the oceans with ultraviolet, which is being deliberately done, I've got to stress that, these guys, the, the, the program managers think they're doing one thing, but their real purpose is to kill the oceans which will cause a decrease in atmospheric oxygen and probably the most sensitive species of all is human beings. Uh, once the oxygen falls a little bit farther there won't be so many humans around, believe me. So uh, that's the takeaway here that while the humans think they're doing one thing they're actually killing uh, their oxygen source and Fukushima is a big factor but an entire ocean does not die because of, of cesium. Because cesium's heavy, it's going to fall through the water column. <coughs> there was a uh, sperm whale that washed ashore 
on the west coast last week and uh, instead of having 12 inches of blubber it had 4 inches of blubber so all these marine animals are starving because the base of the food chain has been destroyed and this is an intentional program to eradicate 99% of, of mankind from this planet so <clears throat> things are not simple but that is the bottom line these programs have got to be stopped and managed beneficially or we are all uh, going extinct okay thanks for watching